Hancock. Let us with the invocation of universal prayer, we'll start our work. Oh, hidden life, vibrant in every atom. Oh, hidden light, shining in every creature. Oh, hidden love, embracing all in oneness. May each who feels himself as one with thee know he is also one with every other. Let us meditate for one minute. Welcome back. So the book, second chapter, the book is Theosophy Explained. Subject is very interesting subject, God and the solar system, why it is necessary for us to learn. And the book written by Brother Pavri and second chapter is entrusted to Sister Swasti Sikha Mahapatra. Swasti Sikha, would you please open your video? Yes. Uh, namaste. So let me introduce Swasti Sikha. Just a minute for a minute. Uh, Swasti Sikha, she completed her BTEC and she joined. So, now she is a manager in Bank of Maharashtra in one of the branch at Bangalore. And she is a uh, quite long standing member of Theosophical Society. She is at present secretary of Pythagoras Theosophical Lodge. So this short introduction, I invite Swasti Sikha to start the part, part one of chapter two of this interesting book in the format of question answer session, but she will present the book, uh, this chapter in two parts. So first part, believing God and the existence of God and other things. So, Swasti so Sikha, now your turn. Thank you, Uncle. Namaste, to all. Uh, so, we all know, we have already discussed about the chapter one of this book, Theosophy Explained, by Mr. Pauri. So, second chapter is very interesting. As uncle said, it's about God and the solar system. That is, existence of the God and the manifestation of the solar system. So, uh, we will discuss this chapter in detail in two classes. So, today we will specially focus on the God and existence of the God. So here the questioner asked Mr. Pavri, Pavri that in the God. So here the God, they are asking about the limited God or which we call the form, the form God. So here what is the answer is coming if you are asking about that extramorphic or anthropomorphic God, means um, what we are generally seeing, like the form, the formed God, like Lord Vishnu, we say Lord Vishnu is having four arms, and Lord Shiva, we, when it comes to Lord Shiva, the name Shiva, we say that Shiva is having certain structure, Ganga is flowing, like uh, some snakes are there, like we are uh, just defining them in a form. So, if you are saying about the formed God, the God 
which he described here the potter and the pot like a potter is something different something potter makes the pot like the potter is the creator and pot is his creation so if you are talking about that god if you are talking about a god who is limited who is uh, something certain to a form then we deny we deny the fact we deny the limited god here the power is replying to the uh, question so uh, why like uh, is there any difference in the form god and formless god so how we know like uh, god generally what we believe suppose if you ask a dog about what is what do you mean by god he will tell my master is god for me if we ask a child who is your god he will tell my mother is god because what we think what we observe in our limited vision or up to our vision up to our limitations we are describing but there is a difference there is a difference between what god is and what we think god is there is a huge difference between these two so you know, he is saying in our limited imagination or speculation what we observe what we think that is not that god we are denying if you are saying such restricted god then we are denying so again he is justifying he is justifying the fact that's why we are denying just a minute oh, sorry sorry for the interruption uh why we are denying he is giving five reasons that we are denying this physical form of the god Uh, to justify the physical form i would like to narrate a story here how we are in our views in our opinion in general person's opinion what god is so one day what happened a child small kid maybe around 10 11 years kid he went to uh, he packed his bag with some uh, cake juice and water and he went in the search of god he asked his mother mother i am going to uh, find god then his mother asked so uh, how you will where you will get get your god then he said i don't know but i will definitely get in somewhere so he went uh, and after some time he went to a park and he rested there for some time then he saw a lady who who is sitting there for long time and she was like she was not well she seems to be very like she was hungry and she was not well so he came near her he asked her uh what happened to you why you are so worried then she replied uh, i am hungry can you give me some food then he gave her uh, the cake that he has taken along with her then he gave her the juice that he has taken then after eating and drinking that lady gave her gave that small boy kid her blessings and that child was also smiled and lady smiled so after some time that lady was still there in the park so when another person comes uh, he asks what happened why are you smiling like uh, without any reason why are you smiling then she said i met my god who was so young who was so young to serve but i thought my god must be very matured very tall and very, like very like old but he is so young and i found my god then the child came to his house and when her mother asked do you find god he said yes mother i found god and uh, then her mother asked how how is he like he looks like what then he replied he looks like not he she is my god i shared my food with my god today so uh, the point of saying this is we understand god as our limitations whatever we have the limitations in our eyes or in our vision in our limitations we understand god we understand everything everything as per our consideration but what is the reality and what we think there is a huge difference and so here writer is saying we deny we deny this physical form of the god because first point he is giving we tell 
God is infinite and absolute. Uh, if we follow any kind of scripture, any religion, we will definitely find that God is infinite and absolute. That means if something, or if God is infinite, then there is no limit. There is no, it's not finite. That means there is no starting, there is no end. So if something is, there is no starting and no end, if something is infinite, then how you can define that? Like it is contradictory. If we understand that something is uh, infinite and absolute, there is no division of the thing, then how there will be some beginning and how there will be some end? This is the first question. And Second is, you are saying that he is limitless. Then if he is limitless, then he must be everywhere. If we say a person, uh, if say God, God is limitless, then he is not limited. Limitless means something is not limited. If we say we, our physical body is limited, that means we are restricted to some part, like we are having some... Uh, starting and having some end. But if something is limitless, there is no limit. No, no limit, then he must be everywhere and he must be in everything. How is it possible? He is described or he is defined. And the third thing, the third point that was given, which is contradictory to the existence of the real God, is thinking and planning is required before creation. If we are saying God is creative, like in the beginning we read, no? Uh, generally, what our conception is, we think God as the potter, God is the creator of the universe, and we are the we are his creation. So he is the potter and we are the you are the pot. So if, if he is the potter and we are the pot, then how is it possible that potter and pot is something different? Potter and pot are not the same. Potter is the creator and pot is the creation. So if we talk about God, then if we talk about God, then the, there is no creator and no creation because he is absolute and one. So uh, next thing is, for example, uh, creator, sorry, the fourth one is creator must make some movement in the universe or the space to create the universe. If the creator is defined, if the creator is limited, then he will make some movement in the universe to create something. So here, if the God is limited, then he will create or else we are the manifestation of the God, not the creation. If creation is there, then there is nothing there before, before uh, or before the creation, there is nothing. Everything is created. But in manifestation, manifestation, everything was there. It was not created separately. Uh, then he is saying, if God is infinite, how the infinite move and how the infinite create some certain space if he is everywhere? It is not possible to create the space. So the four points he has given and the last one is we are saying if we are saying God is the creator as I said we are separating him from the universe. We are saying he is somebody different and we are the creation something different which is not possible which is contradictory to the actual God or the limitless God. So God that we are imagining or what we are understanding is something different that is uh, limited. That is up to certain part. But what actually God exists is beyond this. is limitless. So uh, we don't believe in this contradictory statement as students of the philosophy. So and one more point he is adding here. We all say God is beautiful. God is uh, loving. God is so kind. Uh, God is helpful. So how is it possible that if one, if God is so merciful, if God is so loving, again we are saying whatever the dispense, whatever the glory or whatever the 
pain or whatever suffering that we are getting that is because of god only if god is so merciful so kind so lovable how he will give us pain how he will like it's not possible we are saying that person is getting uh, suffering from his sorry that person is getting some so many like happiness and he is very happy from his life from his journey throughout all throughout his life he is happy from childhood to till today or till his last breath but i am not happy i am suffering or x y z person is suffering how is that possible that god is giving us pain god is giving us uh, unhappiness sad or uh, because if we consider a simple example if there are two child of a two children of a mother she can't give one children all happiness and one children all sorrow and she is a simple human being if being a simple human being or a simple lady she can't give her two child's pain she wants both to be happy and she wants both to be successful she wants both to be whatever it is she wants to give both so god is the supreme power and he is so much above all and he is so much above all so how he will give us a uh, sadness or how he will give us pain is not possible here we are again contradicting the actual fact of the god that's why we don't believe in the physical form of the god or the limited god and then he is saying again uh, if one person is yeah one more thing he is saying if god does god wish like for example uh, if we say uh, whatever is the will of the god that will happen we are saying sometimes god is willing this for me god is willing good for me god is willing bad for me whatever we are saying but he is saying that god is never willing something bad for me bad for anybody always there is good always there is better uh, we we are the as you all read laws of karma we are all the creator of our happiness and we are all the creator of our sorrow so god is not responsible for this so uh, and one more thing again one contradictory fact is there we are seeing in our uh, even bhagavad gita or in our scriptures it is written god is omniscient that means one who knows all and everything one who is above the past present and future who knows everything uh, so if god knows everything if god is above all and uh, so how he will punish us like it is it is again a contradictory fact so um, and one more thing god is omnipresent we are saying god presents everywhere so if god is present everywhere if we can see god everywhere then how is it possible that we will find god in the heaven only some in uh, some people will tell if you do bad you will go to hell or if you do good you will go to heaven so we that means we have a misconception that god is there in the heaven or god is there in the temple or god is there where somewhere sacred is there but it is also contradictory because if he is absolute if he is omnipresent then he is present everywhere he is not limited to a certain space certain time or certain area because he is not just a uh, simple form he is formless so uh, i would like to narrate a story for this uh, omnipresence of god how god is everywhere and uh, the story is something like this in olden days like when there was no school uh, no Rosti, your net is uh, in problem. Your net showing the red mark, and the screen showing that uh, your net uh, internet is in uh, uh, red means uh, you know the better. Situation uh, in the speed of the internet. Now it is clear. Ha, uh, yes, now it is clear. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Ha. Uh, 
Yeah. I would like to narrow narrative story in the old days where their proper schooling system was not there. Uh, no colleges was there for the children. The students we know, uh, students were guided. They were educated under the guidance of the sages, and we call that place as Gurukul. So in the Gurukul, uh, one under one sage, there was two students. Uh, name of one student is Hari Krishna, and another was Radhishan. So both the students were uh, studying under the same saint. and they gave their 100% they read all the scriptures they learned so many things so after the completion after the completion of education what happened guru wanted to test them he told them if you uh, pass the test then you will be able to uh, you will be able to like you will be free from here you will go to your home and you will do like whatever you want so uh, what he did what the guru did he gave both the students hari krishna and radhasya he gave one one pigeons they were live so he told him if you kill you have to kill uh, both the pigeons you have to kill and one but one condition is there you have to kill the pigeon in the place where you will find nobody that means the place must be alone and there is no one present so uh, both the students were interested and they wanted to uh, follow the order of their guru so hari krishna and radhasyam entered into the deep forest and what happened uh, they searched for the lonely place to kill the pigeon so after two days hari krishna returned to the ashram of guru and he gave him the dead pigeon he killed the pigeon and then the guru asked him how you kill the pigeon where you kill the pigeon then he told i kill the pigeon in a cave which is and how i covered the entrance of the cave by a stone then i kill the pigeon then the guru waited for the second student radhasyam after two weeks radhasyam came back and he went to the ashram with the live pigeon because he was not able to kill the pigeon then what happened the guru asked him again the same question uh, why you did not kill the pigeon you did not get any suitable place to kill then he replied uh, no no guru i didn't get any place to uh, kill this innocent bird because you only taught me that almighty god is everywhere in the world wherever you go he will be there and whatever you do he will be there so now the guru is pleased with the uh, teachings of like he thought that my this student is now he is capable to lead his father life so essence is if we think that god is here or god is there no uh, but god is everywhere as because he is omnipresent uh, now this is the Past question: Which uh, do you believe in God? And the answer is: We don't believe in the physical form of the God. We believe in the one absolute God. Now the second question. Second question is: Then please explain your conception of God. Then according to you, what do you understand? Like according to theosophical point of view, what do you understand by the uh, concept of the God? What do you understand by God? so what mr pabri has uh, replied like we believe in one existence one who is the center of all lives one who is omnipresent one who is eternal boundless immutable principle which all the speculation is impossible we may speculate something that god is like this god is like that but god is above all god is beyond our speculation god is beyond our imagination and god is boundless and he is eternal like uh and he is omnipresent so this is the definition that was given by mr pavri and what we call in hindu as param brahma we call param brahma or the supreme brahman 
or the supreme self self so and this this we call unmanifested which is already there which will be there and which was there and there is no beginning and no end that we call unmanifested and from that comes the manifested god or uh, here they call saguna brahma so this is the description that was given so uh, here what he is saying actual god is formless and uh, he and like uh, beyond our expectations beyond our imaginations then uh, what he is saying then uh, he is giving an example here like uh, how we call the like, uh, manifestation we have all manifested from um, god and animals plants all are there so what he is saying like a wave wave what happens when a wave rises it rises in the ocean and when a wave sinks it sinks again into the ocean like it is originated from the ocean only and it mixed with the ocean only it is not separated from the ocean like that he is saying we all originated from that unmanifested god and we will uh, we will be into that unmanifested god after end there is uh, that end and the born and the die that will happen but that will be like the rise and fall of the wave like wave comes and wave goes like the life and death happens but the main part is it is uh, the part of that unmanifested it comes from that and it will go into that it will go into that one so uh, then the third question is all about then does the one without a second build our solar system so now the question is asked you are saying there is only one god there is no second one and absolute what is given by power so he is asking whether that one created or one manifested the solar system or not so we will discuss this in the solar system part in the second class in detail so uh, now we will go to the next question the next question is can the existence of the god be proved here he is asking whether you can prove god exists unmanifested or manifested or whatever you are describing god as can you prove the god but answer comes directly we can't like uh, directly we can't but yes we can prove in what way we can prove indirectly by reason reasoning devotion and purity of life uh, he has given three examples the best three examples are one is devotion we all heard about so many like so many so many stories or so many ancient things about mirabai about radha or about other devotees how their devotion leads them to their spiritual life and their spiritual journey succeeded so this is all about devotion then reasoning then purity of life by leading a pure life we can also understand we can also realize because um, understanding or realizing god is not about something external it lies all within us and it is internal so uh, it's not an object or it's not an not a thing that we can say we can say just see uh, this is god or that is god because it is our own understanding and our own realization that something we can't show someone or we can't show something outside like knowledge like uh, something what we have realized knowledge is something out there that we are studying or something but what we have realized what we understood that we can't like we can't prove that because it is our own understanding and yes it can be realized by the person who seeks by 
reach self realization only self understanding only it cannot be like it cannot be forcefully we can't think forcefully from outside so and uh, one more thing he is saying devotion what devotion has when one is totally completely like uh, krishna said in bhagavad gita if somebody dedicated himself or surrenders himself completely unto me then uh, he will understand what is the existence of the god he is totally involved because he is totally involved into the god so he will understand the existence and from understanding the existence of the god here he is saying god will give him strength and peace the peace we uh, we all know if we devoted ourselves to god then his love his sunshine his understanding his uh, affection and uh, we will understand that his peace of mind how peaceful god is like we say na sarand when we think like how cool our masters are how calm they are how understanding they are then that blessings that will come to us if we surrender ourselves surrender means if we forget our external uh, things like what i am like my ego outer ego if we uh, understand that if we surrender ourselves then we will get the blessings we will get the love we will get the peace that associated with the god so by getting the peace getting the strength and getting the understanding and getting the, that feelings associated with the god we will a man will grow purer nobler and more loving uh, as compared to the beginning when we understand what he is saying when we understand what god is when we realize how powerful our god is when we understand how peaceful he is then we will develop the quality we want to be like him we want to like we want to develop the qualities like him we will be better we will be better than before we will be more nobler we will be more kind to people we will be more peaceful we don't indulge in the small fights or small things that all these outer things will be very very like very small matters to us that that don't matter so we will be more peaceful when we will be more peaceful we will understand more and more that is the point he is saying and one more thing he is saying the ultimate and the direct proof we are asking here no whether you can prove god so here he is saying the direct proof or the actual proof lies in the self that means we ourselves we are capable enough to understand to realize the self to realize the god and it lies within us only we don't have to search it we don't have to we don't have to try it outside like it's already within us only we have to understand we have to realize realize ourselves then uh last one point he is saying which is uh, very important thus only by realizing the divine self in ourselves we can or we know the divine self outside ourselves when we realize the divine self in ourselves we will also realize the divine self outside ourselves that is the most important thing so and the last question last question related to god is what is the object of the god in creating the universe uh, the question is asked so why the god has created the universe you said he is unmanifested you said he is absolute one no no second is there then what is the point of creating universe what is the point of creating human being what is the point of creating animals 
पार्ट इज दॉजिक बिहाइंड की जाती है तो वी ऑल डिस्कस लाइक from unmanifested it comes to manifestation from manifestation the source is the same but then plants animals human beings so many create um, manifestations have been like made by god and we are the part of the manifestation so here he is saying creation is not a proper word that should be used rather it is manifestation because in creation something is made out of nothing if nothing is there when we make something then we have created but manifestation or this uh, world or universe it is already there and from that from this origination from this thing uh, life manifested or developed so what lord sri krishna is saying everything was they are within me everything is created from me and everything will come back to me so uh, there is no uh, like i am the source i am the source of everything so that means uh, what see he is doing he is consider himself as the um, unmanifested or that one god whom uh, we describe here so and one more point he is saying what we call like main object or manifestation main object of this manifestation or main object behind creating uh, all the animals plants and creatures is to unfold each capabilities and reflect divine perfection so what is the point of creating all animals and men because uh, developing the qualities develop or uh, unfolding unfolding the qualities means already those qualities are there within human beings within and we have already we have all those qualities but we will develop it is like it is uh, in closed version we have to unfold the qualities we have to uh, increase we have to uh, enable our capabilities and we have to reflect those qualities and we have to uh, we have to reach at the divine perfection what we call moksha or nirvana uh in the next class we will discuss about the from manifest unmanifested how manifestation occurred and how solar system originated uh, so this is for today thank you if anybody wants to add something or say something then please add that's all thank you thank you sasti sikha now i invite uh, senior members who are here as well as others they can add something or if you have any thing to ask question you can ask questions so this uh, uh, second chapter of the book very interesting god and the solar system so swasti sikha completed part 1 basically it relates to the uh, the ultimate reality god uh, what was uh, the questions uh, from the audience and brother pavri explained beautifully and lucidly sister swasti sikha explained it so as there is no addition from any of the brothers uh, present uh, here uh, now i don't think any questions are there also so i request uh, mitalini ji to close the session with closing prayer
Namaste to all. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Sindhya, sir, do you like to add something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are in the uh, line, sir. Huh. Yeah, unmute. Okay. Topic yeah. itself is very nice. Yes, sir. And uh, Swasti Sikha. Swasti Sikha has explained very in simple manner and tried to understand what is God. And uh, for in our solar system, our God is Sun. Mm. <laughs> we, we believe in uh, because the source of energy is the sun. So we yes. draw energy from the above sun and also energy from the earth below. And our heart is full of love and life. So life from the below and love from the above. So our heart is full of life and love. And when it is expressed in true terms, when we start living a right kind of life, then love will radiate from us. So man is the expression of God mm. and therefore the God is reality to man. This is what we must remember. Sun is the God because he yes. is the source. All yes. science are now in solar system. We, we consider as the in theosophy as the monad. Monad is our God, Paramatma, then Atma, Jivatma, Dehatma, we all this come down during innovation, all this. So very nicely explained. I must congratulate Swastishika for this. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Mitari. <laughs> Asatoma Satkamaya Tomasuma Jyotir Kamaya Brutturma Ambrutanga Maya Sarpe Bhavantu Sukinaha Sarpe Santo Niramaya Sarpe Padrani Pasantu Nakase Dukabhak Bhave O Shanti Shanti Shanti